I know, I know, I know you've been asking this question. Me too. Can it mead? Hey, this is Man Made Mead. I have an exciting new series I want to start. This is called Can It Mead? Basically what I'm going to do is I have a whole list of ingredients that I'm going to put on two different wheels. And I have to choose, well, I mean I'll let a wheel decide the ingredients, and I will have to create the mead using the ingredients that the wheel decides. Let me talk to you about the ingredients that are on the table. I'll show them on the screen right now. You can see we have a bunch of fruits, pineapple, pear, so on so forth. The very bottom says nothing. That is a empty space to where if I land on that then I don't have to worry about adding a fruit to that mead. The second column is going to be for a spice or a extra ingredient. So you see chocolate, vanilla, cinnamon, uh, lemon zest, habanero pepper, um, and then at the bottom I have two little variety things there. The Wheel of Amaretti Flavors, let me talk to you about that. I have a bunch of Amaretti Flavors and if I land on that I have to spin the wheel that will choose one of those flavors that you can see. If I land on the Choose Two option from that previous wheel, I have to choose two of those um, the spices or the uh, extra ingredients off that list. So. Uh, super simple, after I get my ingredients picked from the wheel, I'll have some time to think about what I'm going to do with it. Let's go ahead and get started with the first one. Here is the very first one. We're going to decide what fruit we are going to be creating. So here we go. The fruit we have to use is, oh, let's find out, it is grapefruit. Okay. I gotta use a grapefruit. I gotta start thinking about what I'm gonna do with that. Now we go to the second wheel. Grapefruit. What am I gonna do with a grapefruit? Here's the second wheel. This one makes me nervous because this is some weird ingredients that I've compiled. Shuffle that a little bit. Here we go. Grapefruit and what's our second ingredient gonna be? Vanilla. Okay. What am I going to do with grapefruit and vanilla? Okay, here's what I think I'm going to do. I'm going to take and get two pounds of honey, which I already have the honey I'm going to be using, making this mead from scratch. Two pounds of orange blossom honey is what I have right now. I'm going to get some grapefruits, probably uh, one or two grapefruits. I've never used the fruit before, so I'm a little nervous about that. Then I'm going to get some vanilla bean, um, which is a little bit expensive, but I'll get a vanilla bean. We're going to make a, a grapefruit mead from the beginning. Two pounds of uh, orange blossom honey, a gallon of water, two grapefruits. We're going to put that through the primary. Then we're going to go ahead and add in the secondary after it's finished fermenting. We're going to add our vanilla bean. Do I think grapefruit and vanilla go together? No, but we got to try it. Here we go. Okay, here are all the ingredients. I actually got three grapefruits um, because I think I'm gonna need more of them. I've got my gallon of water, I have my honey, I have my bucket I'm gonna ferment in. I couldn't get a vanilla bean. Um, I shopped for them as best I could, so I'm using vanilla extract, sorry. And my yeast. I've never used a grapefruit before. Never really even ate a grapefruit, so... I'm gonna um, figure out how to take care of these real fast. Okay, um, let's get this started. This is my leftover grapefruit. These are the rinds I'm ha I have. I'm probably gonna zest one of these and use it in the future, but here's all the meat. Basically what I did was I um, cut them in half, scooped out the meat of it, and I tried to get off any of the extra skin things. So, uh, real simple. If you're watching this, you probably, probably have made a mead before. Um, or maybe you haven't, it's really easy. We're gonna mix in our ingredients. I have a scale here. I'm gonna pour in two pounds of honey. And I've sanitized everything, this is a sanitizer. So, let me pour two pounds of honey into this bucket. All right, so I've mixed in my honey and water. Two pounds of honey, about three quarters of a gallon of water. And uh, so this meat here, you can see it, if you know anything about a um, 
orange or grapefruit or anything like that, they, the skin of the fruit kind of retains that moisture or the juice. So what I'm gonna have to do with this, because if I just throw these in here, I don't think it's really gonna impart flavor as well. I need to kind of mush these up some, which is gonna provide and make a little, a amount of sediment in this thing. However, um, I think it'll impart that grapefruit flavor more, which will be helpful. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real fast. I think I've done what I can. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put these just straight in. Yeah, it's gonna take up, it's gonna make some sediment, but you know, we gotta do what we gotta do. So let's, uh, let's take a gravity reading, find out what this is at currently. Our gravity reading shows this is currently at 1.06, um, about maybe one. So just a little bit over 1.06, which is perfect because that sets us at about a um, seven and a half percent ABV, almost 8%, um, actually probably about 8%. So that's, that's pretty nice. Now, let's talk about the next step. A couple things about this. There's gonna be a lot of sediment because of all the fruit in this. Um, hopefully I end up with, you know, enough mead to fill up that gallon. I have put my yeast, the K1V116 from Lalvin into this little black cup right here. You can't really see with some water to rehydrate for the moment and I'll take care of that. We will pitch that here. Let me tell you about the vanilla. Uh, if I put the vanilla in now, the likelihood that we'll lose all of that flavor during the primary fermentation, uh, there's a high likelihood I should say. And that's because during the primary fermentation, that's the most vigorous part. So I'm gonna wait and put that into the secondary after this has finished fermenting. Um, I will zest a little bit of this, basically just go through and get a little bit of that skin. I did try some of the grapefruit and um, it's an interesting fruit because it's a little more, it's definitely more tart. It's just a, it, this is gonna be a weird combination. I'm probably gonna have to back sweeten some to make it to where that tartness doesn't overwhelm the rest of it. So I don't know how tart, um, you know, grapefruit flavor and vanilla are gonna go together, but this is what we're asking. Can it be a mead? So. Um, yeah, here's what I'm gonna do. I am going to pitch my yeast. I'm not gonna be providing any yeast nutrient or energizer right now. I will if I need to. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and pitch this right in. We've got our grapefruit, we've got our must honey water, we've got our yeast. It's time to let this thing go through the primary fermentation, sticking our lid on, sticking our airlock on. I will be putting a label on this so I know what it is and I will give you some updates if the fermentation goes crazy, but I am hopeful that this ferments well and uh, is not too acidic and you know doesn't have any complications. And then in the secondary, we'll add the vanilla. So let's see what happens after the primary. All right, so it has been exactly 11 days since this grapefruit mead started. Um, I have a gravity reading here. And um, <clears throat> I know it's done fermenting because I watched it a couple days ago, noticed it finished fermenting, but more specifically, I have my gravity reading here and it, uh, it is currently a 1.000. So we are completely leveled out, started at 1.061. Now we're you know, at roughly about 8%. So here's the next step. We're gonna see if we can go ahead and do a taste test and just reminding you, this doesn't have any vanilla flavoring in it yet. So let's go ahead and try it without the vanilla flavoring. Here it is. Okay, it's got a little um, little sour taste to it. And I think that's partially because the grapefruit, the grapefruit in general is um, not, not necessarily a super sweet fruit. It's got some honey character though, which is nice. Uh, it's definitely very light. And I think that this thing will be better if it was carbonated. I think with some carbonation and uh, of course putting vanilla in will help with that. So if we wanna carbonate this, which I plan on doing it, I have to keep it as it is. I can't stabilize the mead because then that would stop the fermentation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rack it over into this carboy here uh, in a moment. Actually, I'll do it right now. Okay, so I racked it over, and you can see in here that it, it's got a lot of stuff in it, stuff that you don't really want in your brew, and the, the grapefruit broke apart quite a bit. So 
What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take and dump this, rinse it out real fast, and I'm actually gonna do another racking, but I'm gonna use like a little sifter so I can get rid of any of the small grape uh, grapefruit pieces. All right, so I definitely learned that a grapefruit has a lot of sediment, little chunky pieces in it from the pulp. So that's just a fun fact. This is the mead, this is what we're left with. Um, I still have a little bit in my bucket that I might do something with, I don't know. But we're gonna take and first, we're gonna get another little sample. My goal is to, I think it needs to be sweeter, but the problem is if I put any honey into this, the yeast are just gonna re-ferment on what's there. But I am gonna put a little bit of honey into this mixture and then we're gonna put some vanilla extract. So let me do that real fast. Let me make a little concoction of this mead. Um, I'm just gonna do this to taste. Okay, so here's our honey mixture, honey and vanilla. I put about two little tiny droplets of vanilla in here and about, I don't know, three or four drops of honey. Ooh, that definitely cuts away a lot of that acidity and a lot of the bite from the grapefruit. I like that. Yeah, that's really good. Okay, so, Okay, I was hesitant to uh, do this, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and bottle it. I was hesitant because this is a little hazy, but at the same time, I don't really care about the haziness. There's gonna be some carbonation. Did a little bit of math. The average um, or tablespoon of honey is 17 grams of sugar. All right, I'm gonna cut in here for a second. So I'm gonna take one teaspoon of honey and put this into here to carbonate it. We are using uh, that one teaspoon of honey because 48 teaspoons equals one cup. And I'm going off this conversion chart that you see here. Essentially, I need, like I said, um, 0 0.02 cups of honey or one teaspoon. So I'm mixing that in. I'm also mixing in my vanilla extract where I put in two teaspoons of that. So our goal is of course to avoid bottle bombs and those things. Yeah, so the vanilla is there. It's definitely on the nose. It's not super strong, and I don't think I want it to be the most prominent flavor um, because I think that might be too, I, I just don't think it'd be good. So the vanilla is definitely on the end of the nose, into the palate. Yeah, I'm afraid of adding any more honey in because I don't want there to be any bottle bombs. So that's the thing we're avoiding. I did take a gravity reading of it currently. It is at 1.002. So we went from 1.000 to 002, which means we have just a little sweetness, which is, I believe is enough to give it carbonation without creating bottle bombs. We're now going to bottle this thing and then see how it carbonates. So I'm gonna do that real fast. All of the bottles are capped. So we have about five beer bottles, a, what is it, 750 milliliter beer bottle, and then uh, our two basically swing tops. So these will sit and carbonate. I did not anticipate carbonating this one. Um, however, I do think it will be pretty good. I wonder how this combination of gra uh, grapefruit and vanilla will end up. Hopefully it becomes a very fresh, refreshing mead, because currently right now it is um, still about 8%. After a little carbonation, it might kick up to like 8.25, whatever. So I'll be back and after, after this is carbonated in about two or three weeks, we'll taste test it and we'll find out if this combination of mead actually works. All right, it's been two weeks since I bottled this. It is carbonated. I opened up a bottle about three days in to make sure it was carbonating and it was. And so I let it go the two weeks. Um, I think it's about time to do this. My labels kind of look like this. I'll show it on the screen. I'm calling this Frankenstein's juice um, because I think it's really kind of weird slash interesting. Now for this, we're finding out if this can be a mead, but I didn't want to decide this on my own. So I have my friend Reed here, who's gonna come and taste test this alongside me. So this is Hi Reed. everybody. Um, I'm excited to share this. I think you're on the first episode of this, so um, what I really need is, I think everybody needs is just an honest opinion. We're gonna answer, can this be a mead? Mm -hmm. um, now we'll, we'll talk about some stipulations of, obviously I'm not a master um, brewer artist, yeah. so can someone do it better? Probably, but let's go ahead and open this up. Okay. Let's see if we get some carbonation. Yeah, there nice. we go. And no bombs. Carbonation. I like it. All right, let's see. And I did kind of debrief read about what this is. Mm -hmm. I didn't tell him anything about what it might taste like. Small idea of what it is. Yes, he just knows what the ingredients are at least. 
All right, so uh, let's first get a, a smell of it. I want you to tell me what you smell. It's it's sweet. I get like a it's almost like a peach or pear kind of smell mm -hmm. on the nose. You smell like kind of that alcohol. It smells like a little like a little young, but but it's um, it's also got kind of that wine scent as well. Yeah, I, I got you. Like a white wine. So this thing. Um, I think we're at, after fermentation everything, we're at probably about a month. So this thing's okay. still pretty young, okay. which is what you're getting. Um, one thing I do want to note, it, it to me has a more sour-ish smell. Um, it definitely... Yeah, I can get that. The, yeah. the passion fruit, I feel like the fruit, when I tried it by itself, was really, I mean, kind of sour. It wasn't necessarily super mm -hmm. sweet fruit. Yep. Maybe that's just the ones I got, I don't really know. Um, but... I get that a little bit. There's not a lot of honey character on the notes. That's the only thing for me. It's really light. Mm -hmm. This yeah. thing's at 8%. Okay. Or, I mean, that's not really light, but, but for, for a, mead, for a yeah. mead, it's yeah. pretty lighter. Okay. So, all right, let's taste it. All right. Definitely Whoa. that sour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get that, that tartness, but you get like a nice, it's almost bright too. Mm -hmm. You get that grapefruit at the end. The vanilla is light, and I think that's, it's more of a mouthfeel thing to me, yeah, I feel yeah, like, yeah. than it is a actual taste. Because mm -hmm. I think that, that vanilla had some thickness to it, kind of. I think the carbonation really helps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really tones down the, the, the tartness of the drink. Yeah, because before I carbonated it, it definitely was, um, I, I knew... I did not have plans to carbonate it until mm -hmm. I got out of the primary and I was like, well, probably should because I want this to be crisp. Yeah. And I think that'll help, like I said, tame down some of those uh, harsh flavors. Mm -hmm. I, I I think that the, um, it's not as, the, the first taste is very is more sour in my opinion. I think that it, what kind yeah. of threw me off yeah. at first. Mm -hmm. I'm not the biggest proponent of like super sour beers or anything yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, can they be good? Yes. This thing, after you kind of get it on your palate, though, I feel like it... It, it opens up. Like, mm -hmm. you get more of the fruit. Mm -hmm. it, it becomes more complicated, more complex. Um, if I was to change anything about it, I think I'd make it a little bit sweeter. Mm -hmm. it, like, it's it's just... I think it needs a little bit at, at the at the end. Yeah. Rather than the beginning. But I think it's... I think as it ages, I think it's going to turn into something I, really nice. I do hope it... Um, one thing that... if I could improve on it. I would have a way to carbonate, force carbonate, because like mm. you're saying, then I could stabilize it, yeah. add more sugar to yeah. make it as sweet as I want, as much vanilla as I want. I was kind of stuck bottle carbonating, which means then you're you're at the will mm -hmm. of the yeast yeah, and what they that's do. True. That so is... I do think that you're right. This thing would be better, a little sweeter, maybe a little more vanilla. Yeah, the vanilla. I think it gets lost a little bit. I mean, mm -hmm. grapefruit is a is a uh, a pretty strong flavor mm -hmm. so i get it right at the beginning but then the grapefruit just yeah just takes over. i put i do think i might have put too many grapefruits in uh i put three yep. in and i was going to zest use some zest i didn't end up doing that at all well what's your opinion do you believe that a grapefruit and vanilla combination can be a good mead flavor i do yeah you think I, so? I think that this is like i mean the grapefruit is fresh mm -hmm. The vanilla kind of rounds it out, and it, it you know, it turns into a, a, a nice, pleasant, like, very summery, you know, hot weather, yeah. on the porch kind of drink. I, you know, I agree. I think this, can it be done better? Absolutely. I think somebody, and I challenge you, if you want to go off and make this in your own world, uh, grapefruit and vanilla, go for it. Um, there are definitely better ways to do this. I think that, at bare minimum, these combination of ingredients can be a mead. So, yeah. Um, that's it. I think we both agree. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the first episode of Can It Be a Mead? Um, I'm already working on more episodes in the future, so be t or stay tuned for those. And I'll see you guys next time. Make sure you hit all those links down below to support the channel. Thank you, Reed, for helping me out. And, yeah, you're um, welcome. You might see Reed and possibly in the future with some other videos, too. We'll see. Ooh, who knows? But, <laughs> hey, you guys have a good one. Bye-bye. <laughs>